Hello friends, so this is going to be a first look at this Dremel motor saw, which was a prize from the Constructor Board. So there's the instructions. That looks like the cutting base, must be an insert going in there. And whew, it stinks. It's got a good amount of plastic off cutting going on. That's a little instructable notepad that came with this, which is very cute. God bless instructables. So we've got a section of blades there. Mostly seem the same. Clamp. Just some bent steel, very crude looking C clamps. And the saw itself, of course, that's a. Oh, that's going to be awkward. like actual burning plastic to throw these boxes outside. Well, the clamping's not exactly clear to me. So let's have a look at the instructions. Mounting the base station to an unstable surface can invite an accident. <laughs> Please do come and play accident. Position the saw station in front of an edge of the flatwork surface. Wow, what do we think of that? Bits in question don't seem particularly strong to me. I believe some people might describe it as chintzy. I will see what happens. There's the site transformer I'm going to need to use. That's going to go in the wall. Uh, unfortunately, this piddly little thing is clearly not going to fit in there, so I need something to convert. Oh my god. Did that work? Well, it's not a very pleasant noise. You definitely want some yeah, after a while. So that's all we've got here. Very awfully drawn. So I'll need to draw one, two, three, four, five holes that are going to fit through that. Now then, if I was doing this properly, obviously I would have printed out some kind of nice template or something, but this will do for now. I'll just cut that first. I've got the classic annoyance of neither of these damn fittings fitting the hoover. So we'll start off with this nice small piece, towards the end of the video we'll put it through its paces with something much thicker. One of the first things I noticed here was how much the table vibrated, you can really see that wood jiggling around. And I guess that's kind of inevitable without a big heavy cast iron table which most scroll saws do have. 
cast iron being very good at absorbing vibrations. Anyway, let's plow on and cut some wood. I don't think it's an insurmountable problem. The workpiece and my hands are kind of damping the vibrations and holding things in place anyway. It seems to be making it through this cut without too much trouble, which I suppose is what you'd expect for that thickness of material with a brand new blade. So now I'm just getting the presser foot out of the way, taking the blade off and trying to thread it through one of those holes so we can cut the internal edges of some of these shapes. So the presser foot's quite funny and I'm fairly sure you should have it down all the way onto the workpiece but just so you can see what's going on I've got it up here and also so I can see what's going on when you cut it. Visibility's not great when the presser foot's right onto the workpiece. So, boosh, boosh, ah, yeah, it's come out. My previous self's getting a little bit frustrated there because it's not that easy to attach the blade to the bottom mounting. You sort of have to hook it over this invisible thing and sort of fiddle it around. Seems to be it. This is one of the things that you can't really do with a bandsaw, this removing material from the inside of a pattern, which is especially useful if you're cutting out words. <laughs> so, there goes that blade. I guess that was inevitable. It's a very small blade and I was kind of... Well, ironically, when I was doing that, I wasn't really pushing it much at all. Um, until then, it's not so awful, it's like cutting out, I need a lot more practice with it, I think, is the main thing. I don't think I want to do the practice either, so I better get a building the CNC machine, I think that's what this is making me think. What you're supposed to do is hook down the bottom first, this is broken now, but that's what you're supposed to do, and then slide this in pivot this into here the problem is it doesn't fit through that gap very easily so that's one thing you think they would have debugged with a new blade in let's carry on then i am quite impressed with the radius of which you can do these cuts you can make really quite tight curves here you can see I had the classic on the fly make up the A, um, the centre bit I realised I needed to keep a join there or it wouldn't really be an A anymore. So at this point I'm really quite pleased that Sam has quite a short name. So part of the problem with these scroll saws in general is that the blade only cuts through a very small amount so it's just going up and down like that so it's those same teeth the whole time that are cutting which does make it a lot safer in that you can almost put your hand on it and your skin will move enough that it won't immediately rip the flesh off you like a bandsaw would say, but at the same time it superheats that one part of the blade which is why they tend to break and those teeth tend to go dull as well. The majority of the teeth are never really used. So here's the underside, as you can see I've just got the vacuum very crudely duct taped on there. That's the off switch and this adjusts the speed. about four and a half. That's the clamping mechanism which I've got to say does feel slightly flimsy. It's got some slots here, very small ones presumably for a mitre gauge of some kind. I wouldn't really want to be trying to do any precise cuts on this I don't think. It doesn't come with a mitre gauge anyway. Cuts through what? Four to five mil thick ash heart wood. 
okay. Well, that sort of worked. Let's switch it up a bit and change from that thickness to give it a bit more of a test. So we've got a piece here. It's just ash wood as well. So it's still well within the range of the sort of presser foot thing. So let's see how we go. I'm guessing the speed wants to be lowered a bit. But let's try it. Now this probably is ridiculously ambitious and not a practical solution you'd want to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, that's for sure. First impressions, it hardly really cuts at all. Here it is slowed down. One thing to note is the dust extraction is just fantastic. Throughout this whole thing there's hardly been any dust. The, with the vacuum going, the suction's really good and the kef the, of the cut is so small that the material it produces as waste is, is very small amount. So I'm pressing really quite hard here to get it to cut. This is of course with the grain which is certainly going to be more difficult than cross cutting. At the same time I am only doing a completely straight cut here. A curve would probably be very ambitious. So after cutting that little nodule out I can see there's not actually any burning on it which is very surprising. Here's the table again though, it's, uh, you wouldn't want to use it for any length of time really because all that vibration goes straight through to your hand. The compromise Dremel I'm making here I suppose is that this is a lightweight, portable, easy to ship kind of tool. After that big heavy cut the blade's not actually too hot. Well, I'm actually a little bit impressed with that. Um, it made it through, it jammed out a few times. The dust collection is very impressive. There's hardly any dust to speak of. Obviously, you wouldn't want to be cutting through that on a normal basis compared to the bandsaw, which would just slice through in a couple of seconds. So for what it is, I'm a mix of repulsed by the plasticiness and the smell of it and how sort of a flimsy it feels in a way. Also quite impressed that the design manages to pull off something that does actually work and will get through a bit like that. I'm not really seeing much advantage of this over a traditional scroll saw. I don't think you're ever really likely to take this out and wield it around by hand. What's been your experience with scroll saws? Do leave a comment below, especially if you've used this particular moto saw or just any scroll saw. Apart from that, thanks so much for watching guys. See you next time.